Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, participants. Welcome to this online training on digital for agriculture. My name is Maureen Agena, and I'm supporting the English uh, version of this training on harnessing the digital potential to accelerate agri entrepreneurship and the growth of youth businesses. And in this presentation, we'll be focusing on module three, which looks at digital innovation strategies for agri entrepreneurs. So um, in this presentation, we'll give you an overview of this third module, which again, like I say, deals with digital inno innovations to support young agri entrepreneurs. In order to familiarize you with the prerequisites around innovation, we have presented the Canvas business model, um, that is the business model innovation, the notions of user-centered design, which include design thinking and design sprint, the ecosystem, which includes the techno technology hubs in Africa, and then initiatives supporting the development of young agri entrepreneurs. And as always, to fully benefit from this course and learn more, you must read the course material completely that accompanies the narrative of the module. These resources can be downloaded from the e-learning platform. So the agri entrepreneurship conceptual network involves definition of agri entrepreneurship or agri sorry, definition of agriculture entrepreneurship or agri-entrepreneurship. That's how it's otherwise known. Then there's digital entrepreneurship and then youth entrepreneurship as a development strategy. And they, that's the case for West Africa. So let's start with the business model, Canvas. Uh, this is basically a strategic management template used for developing new business models and document, documenting existing ones. It has nine building blocks and was introduced by Alexander and later on visually translated this business model into the business model canvas. And this has, like I said, um, nine to 11 blocks. So it really varies. And maybe just to explain each of these and to preempt what is in the next slide, we'll look at each of these um, blocks, these building blocks, and try to ask the questions. And I'll first go to the next slide so that um, you get to know what I was talking about preempting. So there was an exercise, a requirement of participants. If we had a face-to-face -face kind of meeting that you ask the right questions for each of these building blocks and write them on a sticky note. But since we don't have that face-to-face -face engagement, I will explain each of these and then request um, the participants to read further. So the nine building blocks are the customer segment, the customer relationship, the distribution channel, the value proposition, strategic partners, key activities, key resources, source of income and cost structure. And maybe just to take you back briefly uh, to look and explain and ask the right questions for each of these blocks. Let's start with the key partner, the block on key partners. What are some of the questions you would ask and these include who are the partners for this business? Who are our key suppliers? Which key resources are, <coughs> are we acquiring from these partners? And which key activities do these partners perform? Like what's their role? And then the next building block is on activities. You try to look at what activities and how they add value. And then the distribution channels and the customer relationships. Then the next is the value proposition. What value do we deliver to the customers? Is what you're innovating uh, valuable at the end of the day? And then which of the problems are we solving? Either customer problems or societal problems. Are we helping to solve anything anyway? And then what bundles of products and services are we offering to each customer segment? Because you have to cluster your customers into segments and offer them services based on their needs. You can't use the one size fits all. And then which customer needs are we satisfying? So those are very critical questions. You can always add as part of your reading and see what more questions can fit in each of these um, building blocks. And then customer relationships, which is a very important one. What type of relationships does each of our customer segment expect to establish and maintain with us? That is us, by us, I mean the business. Which ones have we established as a business? And then, under the segment of customer 
uh, under the block of customer segment, for whom are we creating value? Who are our most important customers? Again, that's like a, a mapping, you know, kind of a stakeholder mapping. And then you, you, you look at your allies, your competitors, your, the neutral people, the most valuable customers, the, people, the customers who have more influence and things like that. And then of course the key resources, what key resources do our value proposition require? Then you look at the distribution channels. Then when you go to the channels, through which channels do our customer segments want to be reached? Again, you have to create different channels for different customers. You cannot again use a one size fits all. How are we reaching them? Is it radio? Is it mobile phone? Is it public dialogue? Is it broadcast? So it's really up to you. And then how are our channels integrated? Do they work in isolation or they work as one unit? Then of course, costs. What are the most important costs inherent in our business model? We'll look at business model in the next uh, coming slides. Which of these resources are most expensive? Which of the key activities are most expensive? This helps for your, your planning. And then last but not least, the revenue streams. So uh, there are several questions there for what value are our customers really willing to pay? Are they willing to pay anyway in the first place? What are they paying for currently? How are they currently paying? Those are very important questions because if you're going to use digital, are they using mobile money? Are they using um, e-voucher? Are they, what, what, what is the current model right now? How would they prefer to pay? You know, do they, are, they, are they short of options? Do they have other options? So, and then how much does each of these streams contribute to the overall revenue? So that explains this business model. And like I said, for your own reading, please go ahead for the various innovations you've started and ask questions that are in line with the innovation that is at hand. So there are some recommendations for the business model. And there are six recommendations to keep in mind regarding business models for digital agro entrepreneurs in the SCP region. SCP region is Africa, Caribbean, and the Pacific region. So this is very specific. One of the recommendations that target agricultural institutions as primary customers for higher and sustainable revenues. And these agricultural institutions include uh, research institutions, they include um, universities uh, that focus on uh, agricultural sciences and trainings, they include uh, organizations that also focus on agriculture. So that should be your prime, one of your primary targets. And then the second recommendation is offer bundled multi-sided services. It shouldn't be just one thing. If you're doing, for instance, uh, market prices uh, for farmers, you need to add an aspect of, um, let's say just financial literacy. You know, if you're going to spend, then you have to know, if you're, if you're looking for markets, then you have to know beyond looking for those markets, how do you? keep your records, you know, how do you track and all that, okay? And then the diversity, but remain focused. Be as diverse as possible, but have your primary target. And then uh, uh, property segment custom, uh, properly segment customers and services. So it's very important that, like I said, one size doesn't fit all. And then of course, identify optimal target market sizes. That's really self-explanatory. And then collaborate with public and development institutions for customer acquisition and sustainability. So this is linked to the first point, because then once you have your target institutions, you can tap into their networks and then build your own customer base. So this business model, there's a business model innovation, the one that I talked about in the introduction. The concept of the business model innovation um, has aroused the enthusiasm of managers and specialists for the past 10 years. And how does this work? You know, how do you, how, how does this business model innovation work? For startups, the assumption is the, it's not even an assumption. The reality is there is no current business model and a new business model has to be created. So it's created when you're starting up. Then how does this transform? Like the business model transformation. The assumption is there is a current business model that is changed into another business model. 
So there was an existing one, and for some reason, one reason or the other, maybe it wasn't working well, or it wasn't serving, you are not meeting the targets, it is transformed. Then the third is business model diversification. So we started from transformation, now diversification. Under diversification, the current business model stays in place and an additional model is created. So you're just di diversifying. You're not changing. Maybe you've increased products, so you've increased the customer base and you're saying we have to create another model. So they work together. And then the final one is the business model acquisition. This means that an additional business model is identified, acquired, and integrated. So this business model innovation is really self-explanatory. And again, I encourage each one of you to go and read deeper. So when we look at the Africa innovation ecosystem, let's first start by understanding what an ecosystem is. It's a dynamic framework made up of a set of actors. That's key. It's made up of a set of actors, including startups, hubs, investors, academic institutions, public institutions, businesses, the media, and all these set of sectors interact and engage with each other to capture new opportunities, support innovation, and strengthen the environment, global business for startups, SMIs and SMEs. And we have some of those actors uh, listed here, the hubs, the co-working spaces, the incubators, and name it. So we have a map of Africa here that shows, it's a bit not very clear, but again, when you go on the internet, I mean, you can just search for it and see um, some of these uh, actors, especially African tech hubs. So for each of your countries, please search and see what tech hubs exist because um, there are quite a number. This is a bit an old statistic because the total tech hubs by September 2015 was 117 in Africa. Right now, I can bet it must be over 300. So just this is now uh, a take home assignment for you. Please search, start by searching within your country, you know, what technology hubs exist and what they do. and for those that you find involved in agriculture related activities, please try to dig some more and see what value you can add or what you can take out of them. So that's just an example from across the continent and you can see the concentration is very big uh, in some countries than others. So it's just for you to time and read. So some of the examples, there's an innovation ecosystem in Africa. There's an example here of, uh, an agri-tech hub, which is called uh, YESAL hub, and it's in West Africa. Again, this is just for, for your own reading, find out what they do, find out what products they produce and what value they have added. It's just an example of one of those that exist. And then the next is the pitch agri hack. This was uh, to support technological innovation and entrepreneurship in agricultural access across Africa. And this one, I must say, I was privileged to be, um, to have worked with CTA, that was the Technical Center for Agriculture and Rural Operations. And I worked with a number of colleagues on some of these hackathons that they had. And then this um, pitch agri hack, I mean, there were just a few contributions I made, but it, it mainly targeted young entrepreneurs um, between the age of 18 to 40 and it was uh, sponsored by World Development Organizations. And the, the competition, it was in form of a competition that helped to identify and amplify the efforts of young people uh, to build around re resilience beyond COVID through products and digital services. And the, uh, the, the, the catch was those innovations should be scalable and generate a measurable impact on African food systems. And of course, there was a prize for the winners. So again, you can just check that URL, pitch, um, agree hack, and then just read about that competition and see if there's something you can pick out of it. So what are some of the, what is the methodology and approach for the design of innovative products? And that's what we're calling the design thinking. What goes into the design thinking? So the first thing is you empathize. And that involves observing, engaging, watching, and listening. 
remember you're trying to innovate, you're trying to start um, something that will impact. So you have to understand the problem from your perspective. And you can only do that through observation, engagement, watching, listening, talking to people. Once you've identified, empathized and you've observed and engaged, then you can define what the problem is, okay? So you have a problem statement. This is what is existing. Maybe the, the middlemen are exploiting farmers or the market prices are not, um, they don't reach the farmers on time or the weather, you know, or the, the, the this um, farm uh, products, let's say um, fertilizers, manure and all this, or information, you know? So you, you state that problem statement and get the requirements that are needed to try and start to solve that. So from that's really from your point of view. And then from there you ideate, that is you generate the idea, explore options and collaborations, okay? So you, you've, you've, you've observed, you've gotten the problem, now you're generating ideas of how to solve the problem. Then now you create the model of how you're going to solve this. Is it through an e-voucher? Is it through a USSD? Is it through the web? What, what, I, what, what do you want to use? And then you test it and validate if it works, okay? Once that, once that works, uh, you have to solicit for feedback, engage users and compare user needs, okay? So you have to get feedback from the people who are going to interact with the system. You have to engage these users and then compare and see if um, it serves the purpose. So, this is just a sketch of what you could do from what we've explained. On Monday, you map. On Tuesday, you sketch. On Wednesday, you, des you decide. On Thursday, you do the prototype. And then on Friday, you test. Of course, usually it's not that quick, but it's just to give you the sense of direction. So Monday can, be, can even mean a month, you know? So this can be a process over six months, but it's just to give you an idea flow. So we have examples of the GMSA, GSMA. M Agriculture Design Toolkit, uh, which is a user-centered design for mobile agriculture. They have done a lot of work on mobile, mobile for agriculture, mobile for health. But this Agri Design Toolkit is a collaboration, sorry, is a collection of instructions, tools, and stories to help develop mobile agriculture products by applying a user-centric design approach. The design toolkit is, is designed as an instrument to provide operational guidance to the development and implementation of services um, in mobile agriculture. So it's just like a, a, a guideline that uh, you follow if you want to implement services in mobile agriculture. And this was developed by GSMA. Thank you very much for listening. Um, we look forward to hearing about your experiences in digital agriculture through online, through the online platform. Please feel free to ask questions about this presentation or the documentation provided. We're here to help you deepen your understanding and we'll do everything within our power to make sure you pass the course. Uh, thank you very much. And this is from the pedagogical support team. Thank you. <laughs>